Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here and I hope you're having a great day. I've been asked by a lot of people to address the issue of electric vehicle supply equipment and specifically what the circuiting requirements are. Can you put a 30 amp charger on a 40 amp breaker? Do you have to put a 30 amp charger on a 40 amp breaker? And more specifically, what do you do with a 48 amp electric vehicle supply equipment? So we're going to talk about this and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so here's an example of the type of email that I'm getting, and I'm getting a lot of these emails, and I'm getting you know Facebook messages and everything else. So, uh, Ryan, my question is regarding overcurrent protection devices for EV chargers, using the 48 amp EV car charger as an example. Is it compliant to have a six gauge NM cable serving the 48 amp and having it on a 60 amp overcurrent protection device? We believe that it is, as per table 310.16 and table 240.6, being that a the 55 amps is not a standard size, so the next one up is 60 amps. Some manufacturers we are seeing are depicting a 4 gauge circuit. I understand section 110.3b, but putting that aside, would the 6 gauge NM cable for this 48 amp charger be code compliant on a 60 amp overcurrent device in your opinion? No. No, period. There you go. It's, it's not. It's absolutely not. If you have a 48 amp electric vehicle supply equipment and you're using NM cable, you must use 4 gauge NM cable for that circuit. So let's go ahead and open up the code book and we'll figure out why that is. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. 625.42 is where I'd like to start, although to be honest with you, uh, the code is the same with or without this section. It says all EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment, are considered a continuous load. Now the code uses the phrase electric vehicle supply equipment, and I know the slang term is a car charger. Look, if you want to call it a car charger, call it a car charger. I don't care. I usually do. Uh, but the charger is inside the car. What we supply, what we install is electric vehicle supply equipment. So just kind of bear that in mind when you read the code book. All electric vehicle supply equipment are considered a continuous load. Yeah, because they are, right? A continuous load, remember back in Article 100, continuous load is a load that is expected to run at its peak load for three hours consecutive or more. So how do you use an electric vehicle supply equipment? Well, you come home from work, you plug in the vehicle, and you forget about it until the next morning. It is definitely a continuous load. 625.42 doesn't necessarily have to tell us that because it is by definition, but it does go ahead and say it here in this section. So all EVSE is a continuous load, and that is the critical part to this question. Service and feeder loads are based on the product ratings unless allowed by A or B, and we'll talk about A or B. So, here in this example, we have a 30 amp electric vehicle supply equipment. So, what do we do when it comes to sizing the wire and sizing the overcurrent device? Well, because it's a continuous load, 210.19 and 210.20 wire breaker tells us to size it at 125%. So, we're going to take 30 amps times 125%. We need a wire that can carry that load and an overcurrent device that can carry that load. So 30 amps times 125% is 38 amps, I think, 37, 38 amps. So we need a wire that can carry 38 amps, and we need a breaker that's rated at least 38 amps, all right? So what's important to remember is that those are two separate requirements. You must have a wire that can carry the load, period. And you need a breaker that can carry the load, period. And that's where people are screwing up. They're trying to mix all of these things together. So you need a wire that can carry 38 amps, you need a breaker that can carry 38 amps. And of course, that's gonna be a 40 amp overcurrent device, 40 amp breaker, and eight gauge conductors. Simple, right? When we have a 30 amp charger, it's easy enough. Where people get screwed up is when we start talking about this 48 amp charger. Let's keep reading. Service and feeder loads, based on the product ratings, unless allowed by A or B. 
A talks about an energy management system. It's not likely that you're going to have one of these in your house unless you've got a pretty extravagant house. But if you have an energy management system that complies with 750.30, uh, the energy management system can limit the load, and if the EMS consists of multiple pieces of equipment with integral control, the system must be marked accordingly. Uh, this is something that you're likely going to see in commercial or in big multifamily where you've got a lot of vehicle spaces and multiple electric vehicle supply equipment talking to each other and lowering and raising the amount of current that can go to each individual vehicle. So forget about A for, for this discussion. B talks about adjustable settings. Adjustable settings are allowed, and the calculated load can be based on these settings. All right, so you might be able to nerf it down instead of 48 or 30 or whatever. You might be able to dial it back down to something smaller. The equipment's rating level, uh, rating <laughs> label must reflect the changes, and the adjustments must be restricted by complying with 750.30C. Okay, easy enough. So. For our discussion, we bought a 48 amp charger, and we're not going to restrict the settings. We're going to use all 48 amps of it. How do I size the wire? How do I size the overcurrent device? Well, again, 210.19 for the wire, 210.20 for the breaker. 210.19A says branch circuit conductors must have an opacity of not less than the larger of item 1 or item 2 with terminations that comply with 110.14c. Now, for the purposes of this discussion, the terminations 110.14c is not really gonna come into play because we're using NM cable, and I'll point out in just a minute why that makes it so the termination ratings don't matter. We're gonna be using 60 degrees. I don't care if your charger is rated 60 or 75 or 900 or 9,000 degrees. NM cable is a 60 degree cable and you must terminate using the 60 degree column. And I think that's maybe where people are screwing this up. All right, so A1 or A2. A1 says branch circuits must be sized to carry 100% of the non-continuous load plus 125% of any continuous load. We know that the electric vehicle supply equipment is a continuous load, right? So we're gonna take 48 amps, times 125%, and that's 60. We must have a 60 amp conductor. It's not an option. Your wire must be able to carry 60 amps. That's the load, right? The load is 48 times 125%, and you must be able to carry the load. All right, so bear that in mind. Or item two here, branch circuits must also be sized to carry 100% of the load, continuous or non-continuous, after adjustment or correction factors. This would be if you're installing multiple conductors in a conduit or multiple cables bundled together, or if you're in a very high ambient temperature. We don't need to really concern ourselves too much here with 210.19A2. We're going to stick with 210.19A1, which simply says you must carry 125% of the continuous load. How do you size the overcurrent device? Now, here's the thing. We're doing two different calculations here. One's for the wire, one's for the breaker. We just said you need a 60 amp wire. Write that down, put it over here. Now we're gonna size the breaker. We're gonna write down this answer, and we're gonna put it over there, all right? So the overcurrent device must be rated not less than 100% of any non-continuous load plus 125% of any continuous load. We know it's a continuous load, so you have to take 48, times 125%, which is 60 amps. So you need a 60 amp breaker, you need a 60 amp wire. And then at the end of the day, we need to make sure that the breaker protects the wire. Now, of course it's going to, because you have to have a 60 amp wire and a 60 amp breaker, right? Now, could you install a 65 or a 70 amp breaker? Uh, sure, potentially, but then you'd have to increase the size of the wire Right? So at a minimum, 60 amp wire, 60 amp breaker. There's an exception here that says if the assembly and the overcurrent device, so the panel board and the breaker, are listed for continuous operation at 100%, then the device could also be sized at 100%, the device being the circuit breaker. Now, I want you to look at this picture here. This one says suitable for continuous operation, but, but look at the frame. This goes into a 1200 amp piece of gear. Your circuit breaker at your house is not 
rated for 100% operation. This is out of UL 489. So this is the product standard for molded case circuit breakers. This is how we test breakers, all right? For 100% rated breakers, a breaker shall be permitted to be rated for continuous operation at 100% if, we read item A and then we're just gonna stop reading, if it's a frame size rated 250 amps or more. <clears throat> stop. You do not have a 250 amp frame in your house, all right? Not a chance. So forget the frame size. You're, you're not gonna have a 100 amp or 100% rated circuit breaker in your house. Okay, so you're gonna be limited to 80% of the rating of the breaker, which conversely means you're gonna to have to size the breaker at 125% of the continuous load. All right, let's keep reading. NM cable, 334.80. NM cable is constructed of 90 degree conductors, but the 60 degree column of table 310.16 must be used, period. I don't care if your terminations are rated 60, 75, 90, or 180. It doesn't matter, NM cable is a 60 degree cable. So let's wrap this up. We're gonna to go to table 310.16, 60 degree column. We must have a conductor that can carry at least 60 amps. Does six gauge wire carry 60 amps? No, six gauge wire is a 55 amp conductor. You can't use it, period. You must have a conductor that carries the load. The load is 48 times 125%, the load is 60, all right? You need a 60 amp wire and a 60 amp breaker, which means you're gonna have to use four gauge NM cable, which is rated 70 amps, and then you're gonna put it on a 60 amp breaker, all right? So if you're doing residential, if you're doing NM cable, you need four gauge wire and you need a 60 amp breaker. If you were not using NM cable, if you were using a steel conduit, for example, and your breaker, was rated 75 degrees and the EVSE was rated 75 degrees, then you could actually use six gauge wire because that is rated 65 amps at the 75 degree column. But if you're using NM cable, you have to use a 60 degree column. You must have a wire that can carry 60 amps and that is a four gauge wire, not a six gauge wire. All right, everybody, we'll see you on the next video. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.